Harry is not there. Yes, yes Harry. Pranish, how about starting the YouTube live? YouTube? YouTube is, is started, yes. So most respected speakers of today's session for the third batch P program, Dr. Suzuki, Madam Yanka, Dr. Darling, uh, Professor Fatima, Dr. G. Kishore, Amal, and all my DP teachers, a warm welcome one and all to the third batch of the PE program. May I take this opportunity to introduce our guest speakers? Okay. Dr. Suzuki. Dr. Naike Suzuki is Associate Professor of Tokyo uh, Gakuengi University in Tokyo, Japan. He completed his PhD in 2007 uh, at the, uh, with the topic of PE assessment at Tokyo Gakuen University in Japan. He has an interest in teaching and researching about physical education teacher training. He used to be an elementary school teacher. He's taught elementary students for nine years. And then right now he's a professor since 2004. He's challenging to incorporate the technology into PE based on his previous researches. He developed the distance learning and application of PE. He's positively implemented them on games curriculum. He was the chair of the Executive Council of the Sixth International Games Since Conference, has successfully managed it in Japan. The number of participants reached a record in the past five conferences. He made a platform for sharing information related to not only game sense, but also a wide range of game-centered approaches for teachers, researchers, coaches, and other practitioners. He contributed to the integration development of a derivative teaching approach that was based on TGFU. Till now, he is trying to broaden the concepts of game-centered approach. He's organizing the seminar and lectures for game and centered approaches in Japan. Indeed, a great honor of having, and we are privileged of having Dr. Suzuki, the present generation with the transformation of technology in terms of the practical teaching of P. A warm welcome to Professor Suzuki. Our next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Bianca, who is a research fellow for the Japan Society of the Promotion of Science and is currently conducting research on the impact of mega sports events on undergraduate student, students' beliefs about coaching at Waseda University, Japan. Bianca's research focuses on contemporary developments in physical education and sport related pedagogy and on teacher coach development and practice, having presented and published on these topics at international conferences. As a beginning researcher, she is author of a few books, chapters, and has recently been invited to deliver a workshop on game sense and write a book chapter on questioning in soccer in Japan. In addition, she has an experience as a physical education teacher in Portugal and as a tutor in the sports coaching degree at the University of Canterbury, New Zealand. She has also an extensive background in gymnastics, where she has competed in artistic gymnastics and won several national titles. And in the past 11 years, she has coached acrobatics and artistic gymnastics both in Portugal and New Zealand. So indeed, we have eminent speakers for today's session. Professor Bianca, an artistic gymnast and a multifaceted personality when we talk of gymnastics and uh, uh, talent and then soccer and into research academics. Indeed, it's a great honor for this, for this P community. So on behalf of the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, Government of India, Kalo India, a warm welcome the most dignified speakers. Dr. Naike Suzuki, a warm welcome to you and a warm welcome to Madam Bianca Angle to this session. Thank I'd like you very to much, welcome, I'd like to welcome Professor Rosa and also uh, Dr. Darling and Fatima, a great Olympian from Morocco to this session. A warm welcome to, to Dr. G. Kishore, who's the principal also so to this session and uh, my co-host, Stamal Raj. And my dear PE teachers, I always keep telling, we are indeed blessed because of such eminent speakers and panelists helping us with a mission of uh, learning in every sense. So warm welcome to all my dear PE teachers. I always say it's because of you that we could have this platform. Once again, on behalf of the Ministry of Youth Affairs, a warm welcome to one and all.
May I now request our most dignified speaker, Suzuki and uh, Bianca, to kindly take in the session. Um, and so, Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I, I'm sorry, that I'm muted. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see. Yes. Oh. My mic. Can I start my uh, presentation? Yes, please. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you for your introduction. I'm Naoki Suzuki. Uh, Co-presenter is uh, Dr. Bianca Aguayad. We are very honored to be speak to you today. I would like to express my thanks to Dr. Usha Nair for inviting us to this session today. It's a pleasure to be here. So our lecture topic is game-based approaches in physical education. We are talking about the way of incorporating authentic game teaching into physical education. If you want to have a handout, please uh, capture the QR code on the slide. You can download it for only one day, or uh, you can go to the URL I sent you, there. but uh, please don't post it on uh, social media. Just a minute, Suzuki. Uh, yeah. A request to our uh, P teachers, please do not post any of these in the social media. It's a kind request. Yeah. yeah thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So please see the slide. We have three contents on our lecture. So first, I'm going to tell you about the reasons for incorporating game-based approaches into game teaching. Traditional game teaching in Japan has followed the military drill approach that emphasizes endless uh, respective drills aimed at performing techniques out of context, but with a little actual play. The, uh, tr the traditional approaches described previous are skill centered you approaches. Can't see the screen, are you playing something on the screen? It's blank. I mean, the yeah, traditional game. Okay. Yeah, I will also show you, show you the uh, video clips. I okay? Yes, okay, thank you. Yeah, you can see the uh, first slide. Teaching yeah. in Japan. Okay. Okay. Yes, a uh, skill centered approach that uh, so Banka and Sopo are critical of. The uh, traditional approaches are uh, based on the behavior theories of uh, learning and influenced by structuralism and essentialism. It follows the uh, process of the, the, the main game based on the assumption that a uh, technique had to be mastered before being able to play the game. In each lesson, the, the vast majority of uh, learning time was devoted to uh, drills with sometimes only a few minutes left to play a game at the end of the lesson. PE teachers intended to teach uh, students how to play the official school game and uh, did not consider changing the game to make it easier to learn or scaffolding on the previous learning by moving from simple games to more complex games. As is uh, practice, practiced in uh, game-based approaches, I'm going to show you the video clip of the uh, representative uh, traditional game teaching in Japan. Traditional teaching. Traditionally, the area of ball games in Japan's physical education has been given attention to the skills. So, classes in general usually start from doing well.
and they practice according to each task. Just like this, in a typical ball exercise, students learn the skills like puzzle pieces, which eventually leads to an actual game. This is often called a factory or product model. Games are set to be played at the end of a class in order to demonstrate and perform what they have practiced and are often very short in time. In this class, only three minutes of a game is gi being given. Yes, uh, this learning was much like the production line in the factory, which uh, transfers techniques and knowledge using a conveyor belt and diary and assembling them into the uh, finished product at the end of the line. That is, uh, the curriculum was for educating athletes. There has been a significant international influence for game-based approaches. I have uh, listed some of a more a prominent uh, resources on the slide. Game-based approaches to teaching games are going to become a fixed part of teaching board games in Japan. And replace the outdated approaches I have earlier outlined it. This is uh, because of a, a very a major change in uh, view on the place of physical education in school and uh, its aims. These changes involve a major shift from teacher-centered to uh, student-centered learning and an emphasis on the intellectual and social aspects of learning in the, through games. As such, there is a, a need to better understand the na nature of tactical learning and the relevant outcomes. A prominent focus of uh, student learning with, within the uh, uh, game-based approaches of instruction is the ability to make appropriate decisions in the uh, game play situations. Over recent years, the traditional uh, technical approach in uh, Japan is being replaced by the inquiry-based approach, which emphasized uh, playing games joyful regardless of skill level. This has uh, resulted in the, the uh, 2008 National Course of Study. So in previous versions of Course of Study, the name of official sports was used to indicate a learning content. And in particular, with the uh, three big sports of Japan, which were soccer, basketball, and volleyball. However, the broad term type came to be used for the notation of the contents from the revision in 1998 to broaden the possibilities for modified small-sided games. In the course of study in 2008, this tendency was incre increasingly emphasized with the move to using the game categories used in the TJFU. As a result, all learning contents were described as a type and the full sport name is only shown to provide guidelines. Thus, it seems that the game curriculum has been increasingly shaped by the tactical approaches, as is uh, evident in the tradition of the contents. While it is uh, clear that a drilling technique out of context does not produce good games, players, or uh, typically generate much pressure for learners, just letting students play the full game without any structure or aim on the part of teacher will not necessarily produce good games players either. Under the current course of study, the Japanese teachers want students to acquire both knowledge and skills, but within the modified games. So they ask their students to implement game plans for each modified game as an agreed strategy for the team. A game plan is a tactical plan developed by the student team in the game. The game plans are used to dissolve the differences between players in skill and confidence. By allowing all players to contribute to the game plan and share in the team effort, it focuses on the social interaction involved in the collective design of game plans as an inter intellectual activity and collective dis discussion. And the formulation of a game plan that is then tested in the game. This is followed by group reflection and evaluation of the uh, plan uh, leading to modification and further testing in the game. 
This is very similar to framework for game sense outlined by Wright, which describes the a need to provide opportunities for learners to collectively formulate strategies, test them in the game, uh, reflect upon the uh, evaluate to evaluate them and test again in the same process of inquiry asked for in the game plan approaches. Also, the, the game plan enhance, enhance student interaction. Many of the game plans uh, result in effective uh, solutions to problems uh, posed by the game game because the uh, student lack the uh, tactical understanding to inform their decision. Now I will show you an example. The students were asked by the teacher what they would do if the fast break is. So they decided to practice skills such as cross play. The actual game had started. However, a fast break is being used instead of using the tactics they just practiced. Using a fast break is more effective. Here comes a chance to do fast break. However, they only did, did a parallel play. There are many tactics that are being practiced but are not used in actual games. I think you have noticed that, that the game plans are not effective in the real game. The separation between practice and game is found in these movies. I think that the game plans should be based on tactical understanding. Therefore, instead of focusing on making a game plan from the beginning, uh, teachers uh, need to systematize it uh, through the game as uh, tactical awareness, tactical understanding, tactical appreciation, application and uh, making a game plan. So keywords of a uh, future curriculum are uh, uh, participation and uh, collaboration. That is, the goal of game-based approaches in Japan is to change the participation at uh, its core to being aware of tactics uh, through experiences. So uh, the scope is uh, related to the tactics covered and uh, also the also, the uh, K-12 uh, sequence would contribute to students uh, making appropriate games planned for game play based on uh, their developmental de level. This scope and uh, sequence should occur within the every game category. The student so the current uh, physical education curriculum in Japan aims to guide students toward achieving the idea of lifelong participation in sports and, and uh, leading an active lifestyle. In game teaching, it is thus uh, important to make learning enjoyable and uh, meaningful as light suggests in the positive pedagogy approach. The influence of game-based approaches such as TJFU, game sense, and play practice on the game curriculum in Japan has made a significant contribution toward achieving this aim by moving away from the outdated skill drill approach and uh, bringing games uh, learning to life for Japanese students. The uh, teaching strategies for game teaching in Japan uh, changing to learner-centered and game-centered approaches that ask students to think, to interact, and to intellectualize learning in games. Student learning experience in this approach can make games a firm turning point in the move from military drill of the, the construct contextualized uh, technique. The current course of study and its focus on inquiry and student-centered uh, learning can produce a learning that is fun and promote a fascination with games for young people by giving the games back to students and allowing them to enjoy and learn through a structured play, reflection, and social interaction. 
Okay, so next I is going to like uh, next Bianca is going to explain about the differences and the commonalities between the game based approaches. Bianca. 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 Are you ready? You need to unmute Bianca. Any problem? Uh, yeah. No, it's again. Just... Okay. I just had a, a small problem, but I'm back. <laughs> You're back. Right. <laughs> Okay, so I'll share my screen with um with all of you. Sure. Let me know if you can see. Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, thank you, Naoki, for um presenting this first half. So good evening to all. Um, it is a pleasure to be here sharing my knowledge on game-based approaches and game sense with all of you. So in this part of the presentation, I will talk about game-based approaches and the commonalities between um, them and the differences as well. So I will talk a little bit more in depth about um, game sense. And at the end, I will give you an example of how you could plan a session using game sense as well. So um, over the years um, after Teaching Games for Understanding was developed in 1989, uh, 1982, sorry. Uh, many base, uh, game based approaches have been developed around the globe. So, um, here are just some examples of the, the main approaches that emerged. So, we have Game Sense that it, it was developed in Australia, Play Practice in Australia as well. We have Games Concept Approach that was developed in Singapore. And we also have Tactical Games Model um, developed in the United States. So, even though these approaches were developed um, in different countries, they share many common um, aspects. So firstly, they all share the same um, goal, which is improving students' tactical awareness and understanding, decision-making and problem-solving um, ability. Secondly, um, they all have the potential to enhance the ability to transfer um, tactical knowledge from game to game and from sport to sport. Um, they also intend to enhance learning um, through participant motivation and enjoyment. So one of the key aspects as well that they have in common is that they share a constructivist perspective. So they all view learning as an active process in which the individual seeks um, out information in relation to the task at hand. And this can be searched either um, individually or in group discussion or conversation. So the, the other commonality that they have is that they use similar pedagogical strategies other than direct instruction. So such as um, questioning, cooperative learning, personal reflection, and also peer um, teaching as well. And lastly, they can all be implemented for both teaching and coaching. And this is very important to understand. So despite all the um, common aspects that these approach, um, approaches have, um, they, there, there are some um, differences between them that are important to point out. So their origin is, in my opinion, the main difference um, between them. So game-based approaches, they have been developed by different countries all over the world, and they were developed to fit their um, needs, so the needs of their countries and their schools. Um, so this is one of the main differences because then they present different features because of that, because they were developed to fit in the, the country structure and the, the schools and the students' needs. And then the other difference is the way that they are structured. So if we look, for example, at teaching games for understanding, tactical games model, and games concept approach, they are more prescriptive um, approaches and they are more specific in its implementation. So they usually follow a step-by-step -step model 
uh, where and, and they were mainly developed um, to help physical education teachers in the beginning. Um, on the other hand, if we look at game sense and play practice, they are more flexible approaches and they are more open to interpretation. And um, these approaches in the beginning, they were mainly performance um, focused, so more towards coaching. However, these approaches, um, they have now been implemented in both, um, both teaching and coaching. So now I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about um, game sense. So the first publication on game sense was in 1997 by Dendring, but it was only in 2013 after Professor Richard Light's book on game sense that this approach actually became well known, especially in um, Australia. So if we look at game sense, it has so instead of having a step by step model, um, it presents four pedagogical features. Uh, and these features that can be uh, implemented as the, the um, teachers and the coaches need in order to fulfill the, the needs of their students. So the first one is design the learning environment. And this has to do with the lesson plan and the exercises that you decide to do in your class. So the design needs to suit the desired learning outcome and um, it has to provide for modification to make it more um, simpler or complex. And also the teacher here needs to be able to identify um, when the plan needs to be changed and change it um, appropriately. Then the second feature is emphasize questioning to generate dialogue. And here are the questions. This is one that it's very important um, because the questions, they need to be open in order to generate dialogue. So the questions they need to generate a range of different answers um, instead of predetermined answers, because we want the students to test um, those ideas out and see if they work, and if not, just go back and try again. So you need to keep in mind that the ability to um, ask appropriate questions requires time, um, experience, and reflective practice. So it doesn't come up um, straight away, especially if we are just um, starting to implement this approach or any other game-based approach. Then the third feature is to provide opportunities for collaborative formulation of ideas and solutions that are later tested and evaluated. And this has to do with questioning as well. So here it's important to allow the students to formulate um, a strategy or an action plan um, through group dialogue and then let the students implement their strategy in the game. So what will happen here is that um, we'll give them some time to discuss the idea they will go back to the game, um, put their strategy in practice, and then we would stop and ask them if um, their strategy worked, if it didn't work, what they could change. Um, so we would give them a little bit more time to work that out and then go back to the game again. And then the last feature of Game Sense is develop a supportive moral um, environment. So in Game Sense and many other game-based approaches, the relationship between the teacher and the students is more equal. Um, so asking the students to speak up and come up with ideas provides an environment where they feel comfortable doing so. Um, they're, they're not afraid of saying something wrong because there's no wrong answer and um, they, they will feel more encouraged to participate and be more um, motivated. So um, because in physical education, especially, we need to teach um, so many sports and games, finding um, common aspects between them, instead of just um, focusing on improving technique can help students better understand um, the game as a whole. So I would like you to think about um, this question. So the question is, if you think about invasion games, for example, what do they have um, in common? So um, I would like you to think about this, but I'll, I will kind of give you the answer. Um, so even though they have distinct um, technical elements, they share common aspects. So if we look to this table over here, there, there are aspects both in offense, on offense and on defense that um, different sports have in common. So if you look over here, we have soccer, rugby, basketball, futsal, and handball, for example. So if we look on the offense side, they all want to um, work on spacing and off-ball movement, 
on court progression, scoring um, in the opposition side and communication. And if we look on defense, they all want the opposite, of course, to limit space, to stop on court progression, to prevent scoring, and also to work on communication. So as you can see here, we're not even working on um, technical elements of each sport, but we can work on concepts um, that will be transferable from sport to sport. So they will be able to understand the game as a whole and not just the technique and then put that in the puzzle for the game. So because Game Sense doesn't focus on a specific skill to be developed, as I said, uh, but don't know on the game as a whole, it is possible to work on these con concepts and then transfer them from game to game or from sport to sport or even um, in physical education from session to session. So um, implementing a new approach requires um, practice and experience. And so, so planning the session is crucial in order to um, implement game sense. So here are four things that um, you can do to implement game sense and um, have success implementing it or e um, any other game-based approach. So you can think about this. So the first one is think small and then build. So you should start um, by implementing game sense in one class. And when you feel comfortable, expand to other classes. So you don't feel um, overwhelmed. Um, you just implement in one class and then you will slowly will build that up. And then the second one will be pick your favorite sport. So for example, if you start uh, by picking a sport that you have good content knowledge in, you should feel more comfortable um, implementing an approach that you are not so comfortable and you, you, uh, you will feel more comfortable coming up with um, questions that are more open because you understand the content of that game. Then the third um, point is plan learning activities focused on small um, sided or modified games or both. Um, so games that the, the game should build in tactical complexity. So here, if you have little experience with game sense, uh, you should plan ahead with options for making that game easier or more challenging. So that's part of planning as well. And then the last one would be prepare possible questions. So we should call those question starters. So not a, a list of questions, but for example, three or four questions that you can just have in mind um, that at any time of the game, depending on the focus of the session, you can um, stop and ask in order to have that um, dialogue and conversation. So I have here an example of, for example, a basketball session, or it could be a session that um, you would like to work on communication or uh, off-ball movement and decision-making. It doesn't need to be exactly um, related with basketball. So I, I will show you how you could plan each game, what questions could you ask, and um, how you could modify the game to make it more complex or less complex. So I'm not sure if I will have time to go over all the activities because there are seven of them, um, but I will go over some of them. And if we don't have time to finish, then Usha will give you um, a PDF version that you can um, check out. So these are, um, for example, some of the games and they are games that probably all of you know, but keep in mind that you could change these games and use traditional games from your own country. Um, and make this plan your own. So um, they just need to fit the goal of the session and allow transferability of concepts. So then the students can apply the principles um, in other games or sports. So the first activity would be tag ball. So the second one would be keeping off or a piggy in the middle. Uh, the third one, tally ball. Fourth one, dribbling knockout. Um, key ball would be the fifth one. Um, the sixth one would be modified half court basketball game. And then the last one would be a modified version of a basketball game or a full game if you um, would like. So going over the first um, activity here, and this is something that you should do, which is planning each exercise and not just only the session as a whole. It is important to have each game and each exercise planned. So for example, you would write down the, the focus of that game. And the focus here is, for example, accurate passing and catching, communication, anticipation, and leading the receiver. Now, keep in mind that, for example, you have accurate passing and catching, and this is more towards the technical side, if you need to work on that. 
but if not, you can take that out and just work on the other um, concepts that would be transfer transferable to other um, sports, for example. Then um, the players for this game would be four equal teams of six players for a class of 24 students. Um, then you would have equipment, two sets of color bibs, two basketballs. Playing area would be the existing markings on a court, or you could mark um, yourself with cones or chalk. Um, the aim would be the team in possession, which would be the team with the bibs in this case, to tag as many opposition players as possible in, for example, 30 seconds. And you could do like really small games. So then you, you could change um, and they don't stop. Then the, the playing rules would be no body contact. Players cannot leave the playing space. Otherwise, they would be counted as being tagged. Um, the ball must be under control to complete a tag. And the tagging team um, cannot hold the opposition players. So then you would have, for example, sample questions. And here you would put your question starter. So like three or four questions that you would use in case you would have to stop that game uh, and make your students think a little bit about the, the aim of the, the game. So I will show you in the next um, slide where the video is. And you would also plan for modifications. So if you want to make, for example, the game uh, more challenging, you could, for example, make the space larger or use two balls at once. Or to make it less challenging, you could use a smaller space and have um, more players in the tagging team than the, the opposition team. So if we go over here to the video, I already have here four question starters, but I would like you to think about what type of questions other than these ones could you make for this situation or for this game? So I'll show you the game. Um, Bianca, could I just explain that? Um, uh, for the for the information of participants, please. Bianca is going to share certain questions, but uh, she also would um, would like that the P teachers could also put forth the questions besides the questions that she's put forth. So please do uh, interact and participate in this. Thank you. Okay, so this will be the game. For example, don't mind the sound if it's not too loud. That's not important. So as you can see, the tagging team is the, the blue team. They are allowed to move around, but when they have the ball, they cannot dribble. Um, they cannot walk with the ball in their hands and they need to make sure that they make all the other players um, move in order for them to tag. So they have the, the cones. Okay, so um, one of the things that you could do here, if they are already um, really good at the, this game, you could, for example, introduce um, dribbling to make it a little bit harder or limit the, the number of dribbles as well. So I'm going over the questions that I have over here. So what tactic can you use to tag opposition players? Uh, and these are questions that they, they are not yes or no questions. So they're not um, closed ended questions, um, they're open. So I'm not looking for a specific answer. Um, as you don't have much time, what type of pass do you think you should throw? This is another question that you can use to stimulate um, thinking. What type of passes can you do? When can they do um, those passes? Uh, where in the playing space is the best place to um, move the opposition players and why? Um, so here I have some examples, for example, corner or center. You, you can help them with that. Uh, or just go straight to why and let them think about it. Um, and the other one would be, how can the ball carrier know where the teammates in position to tag are? So this last question over here would probably, um, it is probably towards communication, um, but you will let them go over the question and come up with, um, come up with an answer. Now, if we move to activity number um, two, which is keeping off, pig in the middle, uh, the focus of this activity would be working off the ball, appropriate passing, communication and anticipation. And once again, if we don't need to work on technique, we would take appropriate passing out and we will leave the, the rest. Um, so here the players, we would have groups of three. It would be a 2v1 um, game, but you could make this as big as you would like and, and regarding the um, ability of your students and their needs. Um, so the equipment would be a basketball for each group and you also have um, colored bibs for the defenders. The playing area would be any area uh, with enough room for the players to move freely. And the area can also be once again marked um, by you with cones or chalk. 
Um, the aim would be the two players in possession to make as many passes as possible. For example, once again, in 30 seconds, you could change that. Um, the playing rules would be no body contact. The defender cannot attempt to dispossess the ball carrier. Um, in the ball, uh, if the ball is intercepted, then the count ends and then the two players in possession restart, or you can change that rule, that's up to you. Um, and then the last one would be players in possession must be at least two meters apart. And this is roughly because they will not be measuring two meters. Um, then you would have sample questions. Once again, I'll have a few in the next slide, but you need to prepare for that. And then you would have um, modifications again. So to make this game more challenging, you could allow the ball carrier to dribble or expand to a 3v2 game. Or to make it less challenging, for example, you could use a bigger space. Um, and instead of having, for example, a 2v1, you would have a 3v1 with three players on the um, offense side. So I'll show you now the video. But once again, I have here some examples of questions. I would like you to think about other questions that you could ask in this um, situation. So here it's a bigger group, but usually with um, younger kids, we do smaller groups. And you will be able to see here that we have two players in red that they are working on pretty much pass and cut. So what they're doing is they have the, um, the pig in the middle, so they have a circle on the outside, but these two players in red, they are able to pass the ball and then cut to a different um, place. So here they're a little bit more advanced. We can just, um, do a little bit sim simpler version. Okay, so um, these are some of the questions that you could ask. For example, where is the best place that the player off the ball can move to receive a pass and to exclude the defender? Um, if the defender is taller than the two players in possession, what type of pass might be the best to use? Now, the questions that I've been doing, they are towards offense, but you can also do these questions for the defense. So I have two questions over here. They're just examples. So which player should you pressure and why? And what sort of body posture or stance can you use to prevent the ball carrier from um, passing? So I'm not sure if I have time to go over one more. Do I, Usha? Not sure if is, she's listening. Do I have time to go over Wait. one more activity, Usha? Sure, sure. Okay, so I'll go over one more. So this would be, for example, activity number three. This is tally ball or the 10 pass game. So these are games that all of you know, I'm pretty sure. So the focus here is accurate passing and catching communication, anticipation and creating space. So once again, um, all the uh, concepts that we have been working on on the last um, activities are pretty much the same. Um, here we are introducing a little bit more of technique, um, but, but you don't need to especially with younger kids, we want them to understand, for example, communication or creating space or off ball movement more than just accurate passing. Um, so for this one, we would have four equal teams of six players. Um, it would be a six V six game. So you would have two sets of color bibs and two basketballs. Um, you would have as a playing area, you could play on half of a basketball court or you could just mark a space with soft markers once again, or soft um, cones. Then the aim here is the team in possession to complete 10 passes to score one. And if they score a point, um, they can keep possession. If they cannot complete those 10 passes, then the opposition gets possession. So the playing rules here would be no body contact once again. So the defender cannot attempt to dispossess the ball carrier. Um, if the ball is intercepted, the count ends and then the opposition team gets the ball. So here they would um, swap. And then here, the players in possession must be at least two meters apart. So once again, not exactly two meters, just with a good distance between them. So the sample questions here are in the next slide and you would also um, account for modification. So if you need to make it more challenging, you could introduce dribbling, um, but with a limit uh, on the number of dribbles uh, and reduce the playing space. 
or to make it less challenging, for example, you could have fewer passes to score a point or have an even teams with more teams on the offense um, side uh, or just have a, a bigger playing area. So you will be able to see here. Now, the, the videos that I have, most of them are with older um, players, but these games work perfectly with younger players as well. If we just modify the rules a little bit or if we um, explain the game a little bit better or even show them, uh, they will work fine. So let me just go over here to the time. So here they're already playing. So they cannot dribble over here. So they just pass and move, try to find space. They're working on rip through, but this is something that it's related with basketball. Doesn't mean that we would have to work exactly on that. So as you can see here, they're working on half court, um, but we could make this harder for them by just cutting the, the half court in half and, and just have them play on a smaller um, space. Or for example, we could have more players on defense, for example, to make the work of the offense um, harder. So they would have to think a little bit more what to do, where to go, where to find the space, probably talk to each other. So if we go over the questions, uh, once again, just think about other questions that you could um, make in the situation, either for offense or defense. So in what situations would you use a law pass? Um, and a bounce pass. So this would give a range of answers, um, possible answers. And then we just uh, would let them go to the game, try those out, see if they work and then come back, question them about that. And then which teammates should you pass to and why? Um, and then for the defense, for example, which player should you pressure and why as well? And if the receiver is moving quickly, where should the pass go? So these are just um, a few examples. So I have other activities. Um, I'll not go over all seven of them today, but um, Usha will give you the um, PDF version of this presentation. So you can see the plan for each um, one of them. So now I'll just go over to a quick summary of um, how Game Sense works. So if we look at game sense, it is an approach that it is flexible and open to interpretation. So which allows teachers and coaches to adapt the features of game sense to their students' um, needs. Now, there is no prior identification of skills to be developed in game sense. So um, for example, we do need sometimes to work on um, technique, but only if they need technique to be successful playing the game. So for example, if we're playing um, a half court basketball game, imagine that you want them to keep count of scoring or, and they cannot even do a pass. They cannot complete a pass. So we need to be able to recognize that, probably stop the game and work on pass. We can either do that through another game or even do that through um, a passing drill. There's no reason why we shouldn't do that. But when we use game sense, it doesn't mean that we cannot work on technique, but that's not the main um, focus of it. Um, so game sense, it is a student-centered and inquiry-based approach. Um, and this is common to all um, game-based approaches as well. Here, the, the teacher and or coach acts as a facilitator. Um, of learning rather than the person in charge of it. So this is also common um, within all game-based approaches. Um, and then the last one is that it uses modified games to develop problem-solving abilities so that students can use this, uh, these abilities not only in game, but also in life. So, so they start being able to um, have those problem-solving solving abilities in other areas um, of life as well. Now, it is important to understand that, and this is related to all game-based approaches, that these approaches have more in common than they have different from each other. 
And the fact that they are underpinned by um, theories of learning that are very much alike, it allows the teachers and coaches to fluctuate between these approaches and use transferable um, features to suit the learner's um, needs. And also, it is important to recognize the similarities between um, them, um, mainly for the purpose of the ongoing development of pedagogical content um, of teachers and coaches. So now I believe that Dr. Naoki will have a last little bit to present. So thank you for um, your attention. And hopefully you were able to answer the questions. Some of the answers of the questions are there in the chat box too. You could see that. Yes, Suzuki, over to you. I think Suzuki is continuing. Can you see my screen? Yes, uh, but this, the screen was uh, Bianca. Yes. Oh, Bianca. Is it the same? <laughs> no, is no, it no. the same? Oh. Next one, um, mine. Oh, oh, this is mine. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, move on to the uh, third topic. I'm going to tell you some examples of our lessons where game based approaches were implemented. So, in Japanese physical education, uh, ritualistic warming up uh, was commonly performed before the main activity. However, I recommended that uh, the warm up also be done with a, a very simple low impact game as shown in the uh, video. So 10 minutes warm up is often held at the uh, beginning of physical education lesson. This seems to be the, the same kind of activity that is often carried out independently of the main learning content. Therefore, the, we developed a warm up game that is uh, deeply conducted to the uh, main learning content. This is a fun and active game that uh, uh, prepares students for learning. Please watch the video clip to see the differences between the skill practices and the warm-up game. Please take a look at the subtitles on the screen. This is a basketball unit. Okay, here's one example. This is a striking and field game lesson in the elementary school. The main game is a buttress game with a modified baseball game. They open through the ball instead of hitting the ball from the home base. The defense picks up the thrown ball and returns it to home base. If the offense uh, turns around the corner and back to home base before the ball comes back to home base, the offense can be scored. If the defense threw the ball, ball back to home base early, that uh, the offense gets to one out. So as a warm-up game, we implemented the traditional game, Japanese game, Daruma Sanga Koronda. It seems like red light, green light in Western countries. The students played uh, uh, in enthusiastically and uh, made the same decisions as they uh, played baseball. They also completed by throwing the ball in multiple people and uh, walking quickly. As they uh, get a little more uh, body temperature there, so they can run instead of walk. So in uh, physical education, uh, the uh, high skilled players and uh, the low skilled players play a game together. Also their skill level and their decision making is not so high. It's too difficult for them to learn in an official game. So we often use small-sided games. Small-sided games are games with a small number of players on each side. The key point is that because there are few players, 
each player get more touches of the ball. And uh, there are many additional benefits. Please see the video clip. This game is an invasion game. It's a four versus four competition. Players pass the ball for getting the goal. The player who has the ball cannot move. Of uh, necessity, the uh, player who does not have the ball must support the player who has the ball. We make a decision earlier by reducing the number of players and using simple skills for playing game. In the past, uh, classes were often taught separately for girls and boys, but these days in PE, games are often played in a mixed gender format. This game is a net and wall type game. This game is similar to volleyball. However, in an official volleyball game, they do few rallies because official volleyball techniques are too complex for students. So students play a net and wall type game with a ball as light as a balloon, with fewer players on a smaller court, and with rules that allow you to uh, catch and uh, throw the ball. They play the uh, game by different skills, but the decisions they use are the same as in volleyball. In this game, a uh, named ground, ground ball, the skill is very simple because the players complete, uh, compete by uh, rolling the ball around. However, the tactical behavior is similar to that of a game like volleyball in this way that the game is modified to allow students to learn while having fun. This game is baseball without batting attacker through, uh, through the ball instead of hitting the ball with a bat. Also, the runner is uh, making decision about where to come back to home based in a straight line con. The further uh, they get as far as possible, the more runs they can score. Thus, uh, just like baseball, the ball and the runners are competing to see who can get uh, their destination faster. But the game consists of uh, simple decisions and simple skills. The key to creating game-based approach is to modify the game in this uh, way to meet the reality of students. So I'm going to explain the teaching behavior, which the teacher makes the student aware of by questioning. It is the students, not the teachers, who make the assignments. The key to this is the questioning. First, students play a simple game, then the uh, teacher observes it very carefully. This invasion game is like a basketball with four players versus four players passing the ball to score points. The teacher asks the students what they did well and what they did not do well. They were tasked with not being able to pass with each other well. So the teacher challenged them to connect the passes accurately and had them play a game of three attackers and one defender to connect the passes. The teacher asks the student what kind of cooperation would help them to attack better. They responded that it was about making good decision about where to move or when they did, did not uh, have the ball in order to get the next one. So we challenged them to try to move from the position of the uh, next ball receiving player and the defensive position to the appropriate position. As students uh, finish the uh, game, they would look back at the team to improve their next game. At the end, the teacher asks, uh, no, then at the end of the game, uh, they play the same game as the first. So uh, students began to spread out and play at the uh, final game of this lesson. At the end of, 
At the end of the le uh, lesson, the teacher asked them to look back and see what they had learned in class today. All students responded by focusing on working together to connect the past. It is clear that the uh, questions were closely linked to game assessment and the message system. I'm going to oh. I'm going to show you the uh, sequence of a game-based approach from the beginning of lesson to the end of the lesson. TJFU consists of six steps. The lesson I'm about to show you for this format. I'm going to show you a lesson for 15 minutes. I edited it for around five minutes. This is my teaching for college students as if students were junior high school students. The class started with a game, not a practice session. This is a small-sided game, similar to the invasion game you saw earlier. The court is intentionally long and narrow. This is to make it difficult to pass the ball and to remind the student of the importance of support. The rules of this game were simple. However, the player did not understand how to cooperate effectively. Players could not uh, pass the ball accurately. The uh, turnovers were repeated during the game. In the first game, no one was able to score. When the first game, game was over, I repeated the questions based on the gameplay. Instead of giving them tasks, I asked them questions that uh, uh, delved into their thinking and helped them accurately accurate the needs that needed to be solved in them. They answered the challenge that they did not pass well. Then uh, they realized that the place to make a pass was where uh, there was no space for opponents between teammates. They defined this as an appropriate, appropriate space for themselves. The challenge was to move into uh, this appropriate space and support it. So they played a, a game to solve the challenge. This is a, a drill game. The attacker touched the three cone and the defense protects it from being touched. A cone is considered the same as a free space and the goal is to get it to touch quickly. Through this activity, the, the uh, player realized that the appropriate space was something to do created. In other words, the appropriate space was not objectively there, but was uh, created there in relationship. So to solve this challenge, they play the games uh, by expanding the court to make it easier to move around. Once they play the game, they deflected on it and repeated this over and over again. Yeah, I asked question to uh, students. So based on so my observation, then at the end of uh, they played the same game as they did at the beginning. This was also a performance assessment situation. Surprisingly, some students emerged to play screens to help their teammates move into space and get the ball. They showed uh, no such behavior in the first game. Their movements had uh, obviously become quicker and they were able to connect with the ball and score goals as well as getting better at attacking. They were also getting better at defending. And it was clear that uh, also all players were getting better through uh, playing the game. They appreciated the uh, ch changed changes uh, they made after the game as a result of being aware of the way. They worked together and the quick, uh, quality of their play. At the end, they looked back and connected to the next learning session. The game is the teacher 
Uh, teaching is an organic connection uh, between the uh, game and the player. So I'm going to introduce another GPA uh, lesson to you. This is a network type game for ninth graders. The, the class is 50 minutes long. First, this is a warm up game. The attacker was alone and was uh, trying to score by dropping the ball to avoid being caught by three defenders. This was a super small sided game. The teacher explained in the video how to play the game. In this game, players play the game of three versus three players on the badminton court. The rule was that uh, players uh, could connect the ball up to three times within uh, their own team. And uh, the second time they could catch it. The teachers observed the game carefully to identify a situation that would be the uh, challenge. He took a picture of it. After the game, the teacher showed the picture and asked some questions to students. In this case, they were focusing on defense. The teacher had the uh, students try to figure out uh, why the ball had dropped. Students concluded that it was uh, because they did not position themselves uh, properly after attacking. Therefore, the student played the game with a positioning in mind. Once students uh, had played the game, they repeated the reflection discussion. Students wrote down what they learned at the end of the lesson on their learning card. Then a student captured them in a photo and uploaded uh, them to the cloud to share with their uh, peers. After assessing uh, the outcomes, they continued playing the game again until the end of the class time. I am developing the use of technology in physical education. I am going to show you how I use a technology in my classes in the, with the game-based approach. This is a class that I taught the pedagogy of physical education to college students. I assumed that upper elementary grades and taught college students as kids. First, I showed a video of a warm-up game to students. They could quickly understand how to play the activity. I introduced the main game with the video. They could understand it faster and more accurately than a verbal explanation. This was the first game. Student was developing an understanding of the game through playing the game. Once I determined that they understood the game, I had a student videotape their first game. Students repeated the games. During the game, the observers should videotape the game. Video recording was limited to 20 seconds. The observer decided whether or not to save the video after it is taken. I ask the students questions after the game to encourage a tactical awareness. Then the students are reviewed the video they filmed during the game and uh, discussed their play during the game. Students wrote uh, their targets on the whiteboard and uh, repeated. <laughs> はい、フォーメーションを前後にして、えっと、スピード感のあるパスワードと相手のコートのゴールを早く投げられるようにするっていうのが目標です。で、えっと、投げ方もえっと下から投げるというよりは上から投げて。<笑><笑> <笑>なんか、ボールトレーニングする時間が長いってすごい思った。アクティブアグレッション、ターゲット。で、アセスト。で、微妙なところがね、どれも。これ好きがね。They watch the video. Comment. <笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><
metacognitive it and, and uh, discuss it with their peers to deepen their understanding. They play the uh, game again and then discuss their achievement of the target. They just wrote on the whiteboard. They did an audio recording. So the recording time was intentionally short, 10 seconds, to focus on the outcomes. Additionally, the, the game matches were uh, repeated and the game was uh, recorded. They compared it to the first game to see the changes. Changes. The uh, screens on the left from you is the first game, and the screen on the right is the second half of the game. Did you notice the difference? So I believe you can see that uh, students were able to attack more uh, quickly than they did at the beginning. They reflected on the uh, learning and developed the game plan. The game plans were sent only to teacher so that the, uh, the other team didn't know about it. The game plan was shown on teacher's tablet like a slide with words. I went to Alan to each team to coach them, checking the uh, strategy on the tablet. Students played a game of three bus three. The teachers uh, as a whole asked a question to see how they could cooperate. This is the last game of that day. The student had been in class for only 45 minutes and were getting very good at it. At the end of the class, oh. Yes, at, at the end of the class, a uh, student recorded their self-assessment on their tablet, iPad. Okay. A video used for game analysis uh, also looks different depending on how it is filmed. I am going to show you video clips of the same play taken in two different ways. The first is a video clip taken with a camera fixed on the tri tripod. The next is a, a video clip taken from the sky with uh, using a drone. It's the same scene, but I think that uh, thought it gives us have changed. I also use other wearable cameras, but not how we film them is uh, important as an informative uh, look back at the game. Okay, I explained about game-based uh, approaches uh, with showing some examples through videos. Uh, did you make sense of it? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to conclude by offering the four tips for teachers to implement game-based approaches at the end of our lectures. Number one, teacher need to uh, teach game in the, and through playing games, including warm-ups. Number two, teachers must design games to help uh, students improve their understanding and skills. It is important to tailor materials to fit the game to students, not to fit student to the game. Number three, uh, teaching is facilitating and mediating rather than instructing. 
This is where、uh, frequent questions are asked to encourage students' awareness and help them to engage in learning with needs. Number four,、uh, teachers a d v i c e assessment,、uh, mes- assessment method、uh, to promote students' learning and、uh, make their learning suitable. Sustainable, sorry, sustainable. Oh, okay. At the end of the lecture,、uh, let me make an a- announcement. I would like to invite you to、uh, lesson study.、Uh, so, you know, lesson study? So, lesson study is a, a professional development opportunity、uh, unique to Japan. So, we are looking for 10 elementary and、uh, secondary school teachers who would like to work with teachers from Japan and the United States. To improve their lessons. If you are interested in participating in it, so please send me an email. The deadline is coming soon. So I have already、uh, four Indian teachers. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your listening. Do you have any questions? Yeah,、oh, that's great.、Uh, thank you indeed. Suzuki, it was indeed such a wonderful session. Bianca, it was so great. You took, all, you took us all through. We were so far not in the lecture session. We were with games playing. Thank you so much for taking us to an entirely different world. Over to you, Amal.、Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir, for the session.、Uh, we'll move to the question, question section. So, the first question. Sir, in a game based approach, suppose if we are making an entire class of students too. Play a 10 pass game. There is a possibility that some students may be less active with compared with other students. In such cases, those students may not get a chance to touch the ball also during the game. Eventually, those students lose their interest in playing. Do you have any suggestions or strategies to include those children also into the activity?、Um. I'm not sure if the question was to Suzuki or me, but I can give my opinion on that. It was Bianca who had taken this,、uh, then, we, then we can come over to those 10 tasks, and then we can come over to Suzuki. Yes, Bianca, please.、Uh, I, ju- I just have a, a quick, not solution, because I believe that each、um, teacher should come up with、um, their own ideas to solve those problems、um, because they know their students better.、Um, but For example, if you have a student or more than one that does not have the technical ability to、um, keep up with the game and then they lose、um, motivation, just take the equipment out. We can play, for example, all these games without any equipment. We're trying to develop、um, awareness, communication, and we can do that without having, for example, to do the, the passing and the dribbling and all of that. So, if we, for example, go over the tag、um, game that I showed,、um, they, they had the, a basketball、um, on their hands, but they don't need to.、Um, you can put, for example, a, a sponge, something on their hands to tag, and you would remove all the fear of doing a pass wrong or not being able to do it. So, they will learn the concept, anyways. And then you would go over as a teacher、um, to those students and work those technical elements with them、um, so they would feel comfortable going back to the game. Thank you. So, the next、Hello. question is from Mr. Shiju At what age we can start game based activity? Suzuki, or, uh, you can ask Suzuki.、Ah, Suzuki, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, then. So, please say again. At what, what age we can start the game based activities? Okay. At, at what class? Yeah. Okay. Can, I,、uh, can I tell you the, about the previous、uh, question? So, sure, my, sure. my opinion. So, you can add in addition to what you what、uh, Bianca yeah, yeah. yeah. I will、uh, tell you that so,、uh, to answer that. So, <laughs> number one, I may. So,、uh, this is my opinion. So, I think、uh, so skill is not very important for students. So, decision making is very important for students. And、uh, so also, the so contribution is very important. There are so many k i n d of so contribution for the、uh, gameplay. Then,、uh, so for example, just standing 
in front of the so defense. Sometimes a very good contribution, but uh, so sometimes not good contribution. Uh, so position is so very important. So I think we uh, teachers focus it on so contribution. That's uh, my opinion. So next one, so uh, students like game. Students uh, promote uh, skills and uh, so game performance through the playing the game. So this is a game-based approach to the uh, advantage. Uh, Bianca, so. Uh, do you mind if I answer that question as well? Just very quickly. So you asked um, since what age um, can we implement game-based approaches? Yes. So my quick answer to that is as soon as they can walk. So from a very young age, just because if we think about that all of us in our culture, we have games. We, we play games all the time. So it doesn't need to be um, a sport in specific, uh, but we can just go over, I don't know, maybe five, six year old kids and just grab a 10 pass game, a tag game, or if they have, for example, in their culture, any other cultural game. For example, I know that in New Zealand, they have a game um, named Kiora He that they play sim since they are like little kids just grab those games and introduce them. Just use um, game-based approach. They can um, understand the concept of moving, of creating space, of communicating with each other. And then later on, you can grab that same game that they're being um, able to do since they are little kids. And then you can introduce um, the rule of the game and what can you do in this situation. So have more of a tactical approach to that when they are um, older. But game-based approach you can, since they are very little. Thank you, madam. Over to you, Usha, madam. Thanks, uh, Amal. Amal, I think you should be joining with Suzuki and uh, for this uh, project because Amal has been very keenly interacting with the volleyball children, giving a lot of drills. Some of the drills which you were showing in terms, I think it would be of great benefit. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, Suzuki and Bianca, it was such a wonderful session because uh, we are still traditional. We have, uh, we have I think, uh, 50 years back in terms of the fee that you come in, but uh, you have brought in children and the entire concept you've changed. I always said we need a workshop because then our teachers are quite motivated to see to it, how we can push the children and the teacher standing behind and the, the children doing the task. That's something great. Nice to hear. Um, Usha, I know that we're running out of time, but um, there was a question that came up that I think it's very important to um, sure. go over. So sure. someone asked, what about individual sports? So what can we yeah. do? Um, so actually, th that's a question that usually comes up a lot, and that's why I wrote a chapter on gymnastics on um, the Richard Light's book about positive pedagogy. It's just because usually people um, don't understand, and teachers and coaches, it's hard for them to understand how to transfer game sense and game-based approaches to individual sports. What do I do now? So um, the, the approach, it's exactly the same. So what we're trying to um, make the students um, understand is how to be aware, um, how to solve problems. And, um, and this is something that it's transferable from either collective sports and individual sports. So someone asked about boxing or badminton, for example. So all those sports, um, if we think about them, they have, um, Footwork, for example, that's something that we need to work and spatial awareness. Um, so if we go over those cultural games that we have and modify them um, and have, for example, physical cues that they need to turn around or that they need to touch something in the middle of the game, they will be working on those aspects of their sports uh, regardless, so. Thank you, Bianca. Did it was, it was just so good to hear this because uh, we often tell of game, it's, it's fact. Like we talk about team game. Thank you for taking up the critical. Uh, the you're top. welcome, you're welcome. Yeah. So let's hear our panelist, uh, Dalin. What an interesting presentation. Um, I was just reading some uh, 
what are we going to do in the future now for uh, since we've had a moment of disruption, you know, in the world with COVID. And uh, this seems to be a pretty perfect time to rethink some other things that have been going on, even though this approach has been around for a while. And um, I'm, I'm very enthusiastic about uh, you offering uh, workshops or anything that will help enhance uh, teachers and coaches' ways of thinking uh, to be able to uh, provide an environment that will be learner-centered. You know, so it's not, not only um, uh, game-centered, but the maybe the unintentional consequence is how do you get students to to own their learning and so in many of your uh, examples which were just lovely and I was really impressed with the discipline that these young people have uh, my, my goodness if I, I would love to see us over here try to do uh, what you all did, given all of the different kinds of uh, youngsters we have. Um, the, uh, 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 so I, I would highly, highly recommend that uh, somewhere you find perhaps some grant money uh, where you could actually uh, do this. And if it's possible to do it virtually, that would be a great start. And then once things calm down a little bit and people can be a little more mobile, uh, perhaps have some face-to-face -face, uh, conversations and, and uh, experiences. Because nothing beats, if we're going to change a pedagogical approach, nothing beats experiencing that approach. So uh, hats off and uh, congratulations to both of you. Very nicely done. Thank you very much, Darlene. Thanks, uh, Darlene. Thank you Rosa, Rosa, I'll come to you. Hi, I will. Thank you very much, Bianca, um, Professor Naoki. It's indeed a pleasure to listen to you and all the examples that you presented. I think I enjoyed a lot. I have um, heard and read about and participated in some workshops related with teaching game for understanding. And uh, of course, observing the classes. And I know Richard Lai has written a lot and worked on that for uh, quite a while. So now I just, I, I have three questions, okay? One is related with TGAFU uh, and it is about how in, are you managing? I mean, how? Do, why did you find that teaching game for understanding in some countries, in some continents, has been much more enforced this approach than in the other? Because it has been around for quite a while, but I do find, particularly in Asia, there is a very strong uh, support. In Australia, there has been as well. I mean, I know, but. Why do you think that uh, is the reason behind, okay? This is question number one. Question number two doesn't have to do with the presentation, but I'm just curious, okay, about the status of physical education in the education system in Japan, okay? How important, how is it valued by society in general, okay? And question number three, again, is, do you have uh, any experience or can you make any comment about how are you doing now with physical education classes in COVID times? So any experience about that, please. Um, so because I don't have experience um, now teaching during COVID, I think I'll leave that to Naoki. I'll just go over the first question um, that you had, Rosa. And that is um, in regards of the use of teaching games for understanding being more um, relevant in some countries than others. So um, I believe that Naoki can also answer this, but um, in some ways having an approach that is a step-by-step -step model, sometimes mm -hmm. it's easier because we have a guideline, something to follow. 
And usually in countries that are more um, strict in terms of education and they are not so open um, and don't let, for example, schools individually to take ownership of how they want to um, teach and coach their students, this approach, so teaching games for understanding is maybe easier to implement. Um, and it, because it has been for a while, um, I think it's the, the reason why some countries are not open or, or haven't heard that much about it, not because the information is not out, but because yeah. it's easier to fit in their system, a uh, step-by-step yeah. model, I would say. Thank you. Yes, I had that perception, Bianca, as well, that it's related with culture and discipline, so that there are more, I mean, there are some approaches that are easier to be engaged with. And there's nothing wrong with that, but people sometimes, no. they forget that even teaching games for understanding, um, there is a, a step, so I believe it's the, the fourth step, if I'm not mistaken, that it requires to um, work on technique and skill development, but that's something that it can be taken out if needed. So there's no need to work on that. There's nothing that says that in teaching games for understanding, you need to work on that um, order. But people, because it's there, um, it's easier just to look at it and do exactly what they're seeing instead of just evaluating the situation and seeing what step can they um, work on first. So. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So I believe that now we can, can answer the other Like you from YouTube. Yeah. You did. I'm going to um, answer the two questions. So number two, the, you, do you know Jap Japanese society? So uh, Japanese people uh, uh, focus on academic career. So children like, kids like physical education, but parents don't emphasize on physical education. So they push up the so uh, learning, learning uh, academic, academic contents. But um, hmm, I yeah, some of uh, people that so very uh, pay attention to the so uh, physical education. Those are so very uh, smart people, uh, maybe. And so a third question is so uh, schools in Japan are returning to the normal. So that's a public school elementary school, junior high, high school, senior high. But however, the, so universities are still closed. So we have uh, still online courses for physical education. Yes, so I live in a Tokyo. Tokyo is, uh, has a very serious situation uh, still. Then uh, so um, it's very hard for us to uh, teach physical education in person now. Yeah, so we should uh, so uh, take the uh, uh, social distance between uh, so people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your answer. And thank you, Bianca, for including that example of gymnastics. Because I think, I mean, this this idea that TGAFU can be used just in team sports, but it's, I, I think people always forget that games goes first. So you can include games everywhere to develop different skills. Yeah, of thank course. you. I believe we need to um, pay attention to the, the, the focus of the session and what we want to develop instead of um, really that we're just using a, an approach for um, collective games. So we can take that and just transfer. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Rosa. Uh, Fatima, sorry, Fatima, I heard you stretching. Yeah, Fatima, come on. Your remarks, please. Uh, uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, first, uh, uh, congratulations to Dr. Bianca and Dr. Naoki for their presentations. It was very, very excellent. Uh, I agree with uh, my uh, colleagues Rosa and uh, Dr. Darling with the uh, uh, Yeah, unmute. You need to unmute it, please. Unmute. You need to unmute, please. You need to unmute. We can't hear you. Yes. 
No, again, again. This unmuted, we can't hear you. Okay. Okay. Yes. 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 So, uh, congratulations to uh, Dr. Bianca and Dr. Nauki for their presentation. You hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Thank it you. Was very, it was very excellent. And I agree with my colleagues, Dr. Dalin and Dr. Rosa, uh, with something, with some points, uh, especially uh, for disciplines. Uh, it was uh, something very, very uh, uh, particular. Um, and I, uh, I think uh, there is a, a good future to the to motor learning and human performance uh, uh, in sport and in physical educations with, um, uh, I insist, disciplines and technology uh, and other mixity and simula simulation during the the, the practice. Uh, it was very, very uh, uh, good, uh, uh, good thing, uh, and congratulations for for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Fatima. Indeed, it was uh, nice having you and for the for the, for your valuable remarks. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, for both the speakers, as uh, the best part of it was. Uh, we need to bring in the concept where, because here it's all one-sided where uh, the teachers say something and, okay, come on, you go and play. I find, you know, because you speak in terms of the coaching and uh, teaching, the entire concept would change once you bring in the game sense because you're not making it only to practical, we're trying to comprehend. That was the best part which uh, we felt. So uh, I think that's how the academics could actually come in. Because all of us come on, you go and run 10 rounds or you do something which is which is a very traditional concept. He's still in India continuing the same concept. So I think once you come into the focus of the lesson plan that you brought in and to introduce this uh, in terms of the warm up, as you said, or how do you, how do you introduce with the game sense? Because when you talk of game sense, why that sense itself came in, that makes a vast difference. So that uh, the old concept, you can actually bring about a change. And I'm sure with this, uh, there's a great learning. It's not just a physical learning. It will be where I think uh, 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 the other subject teachers would definitely accept physical education because they'll say it's not just limited to the physical aspect. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Suzuki and Bianca. It was indeed uh, such a wonderful session. As I said, this is uh, an incomplete session for us because hearing a theory doesn't give us a complete picture. And I, it was, I was really impressed by seeing how uh, uh, Suzuki was taking the online sessions of physical education, uh, teaching a game concept because doing a physical activity is easier, but how do you teach a skill uh, on a virtual lesson, which I found uh, Suzuki doing it. It's, it's excellent. And I think um, Bianca was telling me how with the television you have and how can you, can, uh, I mean, there are certain countries which are doing it. These concepts we would like to have it because we are looking forward to, if you could share with that such information, have a workshop. I think that is going to be much more meaningful because by having one session, I don't think that's complete. And I'm sure with these three teachers can all join us, join together. And when uh, we have such eminent uh, uh, speakers uh, like um, Suzuki and Bianca, definitely all are eagerly waiting to equip ourselves because the next generation needs it. We cannot go what was taught 50 or 100 years back. We go the same line. I think it's time that we need to bring about a change. So thank you so much. So on behalf of the Ministry of Youth, West and Sports, Government of India, Kelo India, a big thank you to... Uh, thank, you. Okay. thank you very much, for having us. Bianca, thank you all for coming. Such a wonderful session because every time we look forward to because certain sessions are there. However, you listen to, you feel like you can learn more and more. And I was just That's seeing good. Amal. Amal is the one who interacts with a lot of volleyball young children, and we find him doing a lot of the thing which is the physical aspect of it. But definitely, I was telling Amal, why don't you take up a project? You know, where you start making it the concept. Because I think where you can involve the children in, I'm sure I was sending Amal to take up a research project onto that. And there are many sitting over here who take up such research projects because we are looking out forward to what can be implemented in our country too. So once again, thank you so much, Suzuki and Bianca. Because thank uh, you. I know there's a third thank batch. Thank you very much. We've been hearing you. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank, thank you for Fatima. having us. Fatima, I'd like to thank you so much. I know. I said thank you, you so. Invisible. 
but we found you, we found you stretching and following our doctor. Very fine. So, Dr. Victor said never to not to sit for more than 20 minutes on a chair, but you made it up on standing and then moving, showing us practically. So nice. And it's always nice to see. And I always say an Olympian, the first women uh, who represented from, I mean, the Olympian from Morocco. So I think our stage is heavy because of this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. I'd thank like you. to thank, thank uh, Dalin. Indeed, as I say, uh, every time we keep listening and uh, hearing and uh, rarely come across where panelists sit for so long. But uh, now I find that it's a family. So one day when one of our family members do not turn up, we feel a bit bad. So thank you so much, Dalin, to be a part of our mission and always supporting us. And uh, most of our PE teachers come in because there are some people who are attending all the three batches. Please understand this because they find these sessions very informative. So they make it a point of continuing. I have seen the names. There are many who are attending the third batch. Third time, it's because of you all. Thank you so much, darling. I'd like to thank Professor Rosa. Thank you so much because of the questions that you put forth. And secondly, I always say uh, to all my PE teachers, whom you see as a panelist, we have uh, an athlete, we have a volleyball player, we have gymnast. I think we have all multifaceted personalities who are great administrators, academicians, so uh, it's very clear. It's not that just being uh, good into sport. You have multifaceted personality who approve themselves. So thank you so much, Rosa, to make it really an international one. And uh, you have brought uh, light to this particular program and made it a real international. And that's why we are having so many panelists with us. I always believe once Rosa says yes means it would be yes. That's the best part. But thank you so much, Rosa. I'd like to thank uh, Professor Dr. G. Kishore as I always say, uh, we are very fortunate to have Dr. Kishore as a principal, as a leader, and as an administrator, because he's given the free hand and he's, he's trying his level best to do whatever is possible. He just keeps waiting and he just says, give me the concept and he'll try pushing things to get it done. So thank you so much, Kishore, sir. I'd like to thank uh, my co-host, Amal. Amal, thank you so much. And uh, uh, Pranesh and Harihar for the technical support. We thank you. And my dear PE teachers, you have been, uh, you have been very active today, energetic, and uh, I'm sure many of you are going to join into the project that Suzuki uh, had proposed for. So thank you so much, my dear PE teachers. I know it's been so tiring morning to us, again evening to us, uh, uh, with, and besides your entire routine. Thank you so much for participating in this event. And it's only because of you, uh, P teachers that we are able to spend so much of time. So thank you once again, because I always say you are the heart and soul of this program. Our dear P teachers, we are the ones who, sh who are supposed to bring about a change in our country and be true for ourselves. And once again, on behalf of the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, Government of India, Hello India, big thank you. And uh, hats up to, to our eminent speakers and our panelists and a namaste. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Thank you. And tomorrow we have a session by Rosa Dikadmir on uh, safeguarding of sports. So I think it's going to be an interesting session too. Please do join us tomorrow for the session. Thank you and namaste. Thank you very much. Oh, bye. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Uh, bye. Suzuki, we look, look uh, Bianca, it's indeed great. We look forward to a workshop. We've got a plan for yes, a, yes. a proposal. And if you two can help me in getting a proposal being put forth, if you can help me, that would be good. We can have a, we'll decide uh, on we, the Yes, and then just send me an email and we, we can talk through it. Sure. And you can, okay. you can discuss with Suzuki how best it will possible. Yes. <laughs> it was nice. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Usha.